Is that it? Hi and welcome to Extronical. This is the second part in the Space Invaders um, programming really on an Arduino. The build almost uh, the build has been done in the previous episode. Um, setting up an OLED has been done in a previous episode. So if you're not sure how to do that, have a look at those videos. There'll be a link coming up uh, about now. Um, so for today we're going to look at where we finished off last time. Which if you have a look on screen now, I'm bringing it up. So that's where we got to. We've got a, a little tiny one single space invader uh, moving across the screen continuously, going off the other end, coming back to the beginning. The objective of today's video is to actually just get all the invaders we are going to have on screen and plot into screen. Not moving, that'll be in the next episode, but we just want to get them set up and on screen. So if you have a look at uh, the top here we've put some more settings in. These settings um, are referring to the positions of the aliens on screen. So if you look what I'm going to bring up now, there we go, we've got the screen as it is with all the invaders on and the number of alien columns is set by the num alien columns uh, constant which is I talk about this in my blog. If you look in the description below, you'll find a link to the blog for this article by the fact that I tend to call defines uh, constants fairly freely, even though technically they're not constants. But we've got the number of alien columns being set by that particular constant to seven, so that's seven columns across. We're going to have three alien rows, so I've got um, the constant for that. We've got the X start offset so you can play with where they initially start on a new screen we've got the space between the alien columns which obviously if you increase that too much then and you have seven columns still they're going to end up going off screen so but but it's something in play where you could increase the space or decrease the space so if you decreased it you maybe could have eight columns on screen at once uh, if you increase it perhaps you'll need to drop to six columns on screen at once we've got uh, a definition for largest alien width which is 11 so basically that's just the largest alien we've got we store the width in there. I have a funny feeling actually it might be 12 and that should be tweaked. It doesn't affect the program code too much. It's just basically helping us space things out across the screen. And um, we've got the space between rows as 9 pixels. So how much space is between each row? Again, you can tweak that to your own uh, likings, uh, whether you want them a bit closer together or a bit further apart. And we'll move on now to the um, back to the code and the graphics so we did talk about the graphics in the last episode about how to define them such as a zero means it's going to be a basically no white pixel there so it's going to be black uh, and a one meaning there's going to be a white pixel there so that's the definition of a top invader character it's only eight bits wide eight pixels wide is a top invader character so in effect it fits all in one byte and we did talk about the fact that for example in the middle invader graphics it's uh, I think it's just counted across it's 11 pixels wide which I've just got from the fact that the last one yeah the last number one the last pixel it's set is 11 bits or 11 pixels uh, in so we've got 8 pixels 9 10 11 but you still have to blank off the rest of this with zeros up to 8 bits if you don't let's just take out those if you just decide to do that the compiler will presume you actually mean this it will blank ahead because like just in decimal if I write the number 111 that's what you expect whereas if I put three zeros after number 111 if this was decimal then that's you know whatever several million but in binary it's the same you need to because we're setting these top bits put the zeros on down to there if you don't it's going to presume you actually mean a number like this and it's going to prepad with zeros down to there when the compiler creates that graphic and it will look, look wrong so wherever your last pixel is you need to pad out to the end of that particular byte if you're not using any more with zeros again in the blog post it goes into a little bit more detail about that so those are the three definitions for a top invader a middle invader and the bottom invader and then we create some game structures 
I'm not going to go into the details of structures too much. If you don't know a lot about structures, then you can have a quick look at my blog, or in fact, just have a search of C structures on the internet and bring yourself up to speed with them. But basically, it's a way of grouping um, variables together for one particular object. So I've got a basic one that's can game object structure. So for a lot of our game objects, whether it's the mothership or the, the tank that fires the missiles up often the player tank, um, they're going to all have an X and Y. So we have this basic game object structure that all other structures will have access to and will use. So at the moment, we've now got the alien structure and that uses that. Now, admittedly, at this point in time, if the alien structure only had an X and Y value, and that's the only thing it ever contained, then there would be no point putting this here, really. You would just have an alien structure, which is a game object structure. However, I know, obviously, because this has all been coded already, that in the future I'm going to have some other things in the alien structure that, for example, represent whether it's just been hit, whether it's going through a death, se death sequence animation. So I know all the things are going to come in there, so I've set it up. So the alien structure is going to represent our alien. At the moment, just has another structure in it, and that's just the X and Y position of that. We then come down to um, some of the stuff we've already talked about uh, for the display for the OLED and then we get this and again this is an array so it's a two-dimensional array again if you're not familiar my aim here is not to teach the very basics of C there are many websites out there that will do that so if you're not familiar with arrays or in particular two-dimensional arrays then you need to go and have a look at those before continuing but basically I've got my alien structure which is as I mentioned that just consisting of an X and Y coordinates and I'm going to have a variable called alien perhaps that should have been called invader really uh, considering what the game is but a variable called alien which is an array and I'm going to have it as whatever how many columns across for this array and how many rows down so if I've got seven columns across and three rows down that's all together they're going to be 21 aliens that are going to be in this array and I can access them uh, from the column value and the row value. Moving on. We'll come back to the alien with the ray here. I'll give you a quick overview. You can probably see what it's written here as well. It stores the width of the alien graphics characters on a row basis. So the top row, if you can remember, it was only 8 pixels. Let's go back to it. There it is. It's 8 pixels wide. So we store it as the top row basically entry 0 is going to be 8 pixels wide the next row down is 11 pixels wide for that particular character and that is 12 pixels wide for the very bottom row we do that to save a little bit of memory later on it's not really the way I'd normally do it if, if I had enough memory but Arduinos are with the processor they have on board not particularly blessed with a lot of memory um, so I do this to save about 18 bytes or something like that it's not a lot but we do end up saving a little bit then we're going to the setup. Uh, ignoring what we've talked about already, we have the init aliens or initialize aliens. So this is going to set up their X and Y coordinates on screen. Later on in later episodes, it'll be adding a bit more into that as well. But for now, we just go scroll down and have a quick look at that. So it's down at the bottom here. So we're initializing the aliens with a Y start value. So how far down the screen we want them to be when they start. And then we're just going to go through. Uh, the two-dimensional array so we're going to go through all those 21 aliens first of all we're going across so we're going to go each column at a time and then after we've done a full uh, row going across we're going to then come down a row and repeat going across again then down to the bottom row and going across again and then for each alien depending on what its position is we will set its x coordinate as that start offset, whatever we set that for, how far in it's going to go from the left hand margin of the screen and then we have a little bit of calculation to actually position it on the screen which I won't go into but you can obviously even work out what it's doing, it's not particularly difficult um, the bit at the end where I have minus down is just an adjustment that handily because the aliens are 8 pixels wide 11 and 12 just subtracting the down value seems to luckily um, centralize them approximately under each other so they're not left justified under each other they're nice and sort of central in their columns coming down um, and that's just really a stroke of look at the fact that uh, the values here of 0 1 and 2 just adjust it nicely so they position good on screen uh, and then we set the y or the y coordinate as whatever we're starting at and y 
and then a little bit of a calculation depending on what row we're on and that's basically it and that set up that nice grid that we saw earlier the last thing we need to do is display them so before I look at the display code we'll just go back to the Arduino's where is it there it is loop so the moment this will be expanded only a small amount later uh, moment we're just looping around and we're constantly updating the display so we'll look at the update display first thing we do just get it all on the screen as we clear it blanks it completely off nothing's on there at all ready every time to completely replot the entire screen now this is not usually a technique would use back in the day as uh, particular space invaders was created the processor speeds were not that fast completely blanking a screen a display and recreating it from scratch would be processor intensive and we would use other techniques but we are lucky we've got an Arduino that's running at 16 megahertz it's reasonably fast we can get away with this technique and it actually makes the coding a little bit easier than if we had to go through some hoops to try and uh, allow for a really slow processor so we'll just clear all the display and then again just like with the initialization routines we're just going to go through every single alien and plot it to screen so I'm going to go across all the columns on row 0 then we go to row, next row down and again repeating and repeating and then, depending on how far down we are, rather on row 0, row 1 or row 2, remember there's three rows, and the first row will be, will be row 0, second row, row will be row 1, the third row will be row 2, depending on which row we're on, which is what this switch statement is doing here, again, look online if you're not familiar with switch statements, but Baker was saying if it's row 0, the top row, we're going to draw the top invader graphics there, using that. We're going to use its um, structure here, so we're going to go to that particular alien. We're going to get its uh, coordinates for x. So we're going to plot it at x. We're going to get its coordinates to y. Plot it at y, and we're going to use that top invariant graphic because we're on. Look over here. We're currently plotting the first row. The alien width we said we come that back to. Like I said, it's saving memory. If it's at zero, the first row, it has a width of. If we look back. Where is it? I've probably gone past it. Yes, I have. Of 8. So again, we could have stored the width in the alien structure. So where the alien structure is, we could have said, oh, we'll, we'll create a width of 8 for the first one, 11 for the second one. But that actually takes up a little bit more memory, not much, but a little bit more than it is doing it this way. We're just lucky in this particular game that each invader, invader row is the same. So we can use this little bit of cheat, shall we say, to cut down on a bit of memory. So that for the first row will be a width of 8. All the invaders, if you look at these 8s here, this is actually the height of the uh, graphics card to plot. They're all 8 high. And so then after it's done row 0, it'll then go to the second row down, which is row 1. And again, it'll then print out the middle invader graphics and etc. for the invader bottom graphics. So if we compile all this and run it, okay so compiling and uploading we can see the screen change from the invader that was going across to our array of invaders so it's a static display they're not moving but we've got them all on screen ready for the next video to just all we need to do in the next video is start adjusting these X positions to make them go across and back and the Y position because on obviously on space invaders when they got to the end of, a, of one part of the screen either to the right hand side of the screen or the left hand side of the screen they then move down and back across so that's what we'll do in the next video uh, this has been a relatively short video uh, but you've got your good start there if you want to have a play around see if you can get some of them aliens moving yourself while you wait for the next video then please do the next video will be out in about a week's time so like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.